Came down in the valley, about a mile from me, where the crows no longer cry. There's a great big earth moving monster machine, stands ten stories high. He can eat up the earth, it's a sight. He can rip out a hundred tons with one bite. He can eat up the grass, it's a fact. But he can't put it back. Well, they come and tell me I've got to move. Make way for that big machine. But I ain't a moving unless they kill me. Like they killed the fish in my stream. But look at that big machine go. It took that shady grove a long time to grow. He can rip it out with one way. But he can't put it back. Well, I never was one to walk in lines, peg it with placards or carry signs. But maybe I'm behind the times. You can bet your sweet life they're gonna hear from me. I ain't gonna take it laying down. Cause I'm tired of seeing rocks that bleed on the bare guts of the ground. And I ain't a selling my soul. So they can rip out another tiny little vein of coal. I ain't a moving out of my tracks. Cause they can't put it back. Hi. I'm Beatriz, and I work with a group called the Beehive Collective. A lot of different types of work, and the collective is based in Maine, but what we're best known for is these large-scale graphics. And so what we do is illustrate different symptoms that are happening right now. So for example, this poster is specifically about mountaintop removal coal mining in Appalachia. So it's looking at the reality of the destruction that's happening there as a, re as a result of this extractive industry, but it's really trying to map out the larger systems that are in place that allow something like this to happen. So not only are we looking at the history of the land, the history of the coal camps, back to the history of the First Nations people who were originally here and displaced by the generations that came after them, but also looking at all the fierce history of resistance and the union miners, and looking at that as inspiration and a model to do the resistance that we're doing and seeing nowadays. So going through a variety of different tactics, looking at the system that's sustaining this, which is the demand, right? Because we wouldn't be extracting all of this coal if there wasn't a demand for it. So that's really all of us here in this country who are living off of and, you know, privileging, privileged from all this coal power. And then looking at alternative solutions. So what real solutions are, not just band-aid solutions like, well, let's replace coal with, you know, hydropower, or let's replace coal with nuclear, or let's replace coal with even large-scale solar. Um, but looking at real deep change, so looking at the patterns of oppression and displacement and classism and racism and colonization that we've come through and are still perpetuating now with the system that our culture is believing in and looking at deep-rooted change, so how we have a real understanding of that and are able to deconstruct that in our daily lives. So knowing where our power comes from, and knowing where our food comes from, knowing who is actually being impacted by that. Whether it's in a coal field community, whether it's in a low income urban neighborhood who's dealing with all of the, um, with all of the air pollution from a coal fired power plant. So yeah, just really connecting ourselves in this map and this web of issues and seeing our place in it and then understanding what it looks like to make real change and what the future that we're really trying to build looks like. Um, these posters, we print these large-scale banners to be able to tour and do storing with telling with them. And all of this work is made collaboratively. So this project, for example, was 10 different, not just artists, but activists and organizers working together and educators to create this piece. And it took about two years. We just recently finished this about a month ago, and so we're going to be traveling. Bees are going to be traveling all over the country. I'm specifically going on a West Coast tour, which is going to be done on bicycle from Seattle to San Francisco, and then there's going to be a second portion of it that's being done um, in a car. And we, we travel around, and our main source of funding is doing community and uni or, uh, college and university shows. They'll pay us to come do these sort of picture lectures, and then we'll be able to go in those communities and do just community shows, impromptu shows on the street, at farmers markets, at churches, community centers, whoever wants to hear about this work. 
And in that way, they really exist as these living documents, right? So these portable murals, but they exist through the stories that are told around them and also the stories of the people who hear and see and add their lived experience and their stories into this like matrix that is this, this continually evolving art. Yeah.